Good morning. Good morning. It's a joy to welcome all of you to our Lord's Day service, and we do hope that the service is a blessing to you. For our announcements, you'll notice that there's an insert in your bulletin, has several announcements on it. Uh, one important announcement is that the churches of Door County are getting together at the Cress Pavilion, and we're going to do an evening of mission. We're going to uh, catch you up on the mission work in Awas, Honduras, and also there's a new initiative in Door County for the homeless, and uh, somebody's going to be talking about that from Sturgeon Bay Moravian Church. So we're so grateful for all those who are serving in mission, and we hope you can come out to that. We had planned to have the Gideons in our worship service today, but they had to cancel. We'll have them some other time. You'll also notice in your insert that there is a need for a coordinator for the loaves and fishes ministry that we have up here in Northern Door. If you can help with that, uh, or if you'd like more information, Kay Wilson is the person to talk to, and her information is in the bulletin. And even though it's not quite Halloween, we're talking about Christmas, we are in need of poinsettia orders and uh, there is a deadline which is coming up. We don't know what it is, but it's coming up. So if you can order your poinsettia, please do so as soon as possible. Are there any other announcements? Oh yes, we need fellowship hour hosts. After our church services, we have fellowship and we hope that you'll join us for that fellowship and we get to know each other better. But we do need some hosts for November and December and there are sign-up sheets on the table in Fellowship Hall. So we hope you will sign up. Let us turn our hearts to worship the Lord.
The watchword for the week is from Luke 18, verse 14. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. Please stand for hymn number 709, and then remain standing for the liturgy, which is an insert in your bulletin. <coughs> which is Psalm 84. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart sings for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home, and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house ever singing your praise.
happy are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. They go from strength to strength. The God of gods will be seen in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the faces of your people. is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than live in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is a sun and shield. He bestows favor and honor. No good thing does the Lord withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, happy is everyone who trusts in you. Please stand.
That song always speaks to me, not only of the Zion that is here on earth. Every time we are in worship, we are treading on sacred ground, and we are treading in Zion, and it's a wonderful thing. And we also think of the Zion, the beautiful Zion that we will meet when we meet our Savior face to face. For our praise reports and our prayer concerns, we are so delighted that Betty Overbeck is 94 today, and uh, we're praying for her, for her strength. We're so, uh, her family is gathering to celebrate with her. I have a prayer request and a thanksgiving from Glory Lou, and Glory Lou has asked for prayers for her beloved pets. And was there, is the name of the pet Reggie? Yes, Reggie, uh, who is no longer with us. And we are so delighted every time we get a pet in our life and we love them. And so we're going to remember beloved pets today. We'd also like to remember all of those who are uh, ill and are undergoing cancer treatments for Marge and Charlie, Bill, Valerie, Jay, and Glenn. We'd like to remember Liz in our prayers who broke her foot. We want to remember Oscar and Gloria. We'd also like to remember two families who have lost loved ones. Uh, Natalie, this was in our prayer box. <coughs> Natalie Pope and her son Roy has asked for prayers. And we'd also like to remember the family of Skip and Skip was a beloved family member, and his family is mourning this day. And so please remember the family of Skip today. Are there any other prayer concerns or praise reports that you have? Yes. Um, I was at the service for Susan Sapansky. Let's Susan. remember the family of Susan and, today. Uh, and Mike Silver sits hand. Yes, we'll remember them today. Thank you, Hetty. Any others? Yes, Kathy. For those who go into and near the park, wherever the park is away, bring us all to the family of Lynn Meredith. Let's remember the family of Meredith today who has died. Any others? Yes, Kathy. For Aunt Marguerite? Was it her husband who died? No, um, Uncle Jeff is one of the 12 brothers. Oh, the brothers. So okay. Aunt Marguerite was the last, last one left of the 12 children. Yes. We we'll ask for prayers for Aunt Marguerite, who was the last one left from 12 brothers and sisters. Yes. Any others? Yes. Uh, please add Angela to the pantry. Angela. Any others? Let us, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we are so grateful to be here today, so grateful that your love surrounds us, so grateful that we can rejoice with those who rejoice. So we're giving thanks for Betty and her another year of life that you've given to her, and we ask that you would continue to strengthen her and bless her. We thank you, Lord, for providing us not only with the people who surround us, but beloved pets. And we remember those beloved pets today, and especially Reggie. We ask that you would help us to be kind to all the animals that you've given to us, and remember that they are gifts from you. We would remember all of those who are undergoing cancer treatments. For Marge and Charlie, Bill, Valerie, Jay, Glenn and Angela, that your grace and your mercy and your power would sustain them through these treatments. We ask that you would give strength to Liz as she mends, that Oscar may th know that underneath him are the everlasting arms. We ask that Gloria might be given strength and hope. And for all of those who have lost loved ones, 
and who are looking to the future with grief. We thank you that they are in the nearer presence of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We thank you that their pain is gone, and we ask that comfort would surround the families of Natalie and Skip and Susan and Meredith. We pray for Marguerite as she finishes her journey, knowing that she is the last one left, that you would give to her your special grace and mercy. And so, Lord, we bring ourselves to you. We know that there are so many in this church that could not speak a word of prayer, who have burdens that are too heavy to bear. And so, Lord, we lift them up as well, for we know that you know all, you know the deepest desires of our hearts, and we are confident in your grace, your love, and your mercy. In Jesus' name, amen.
help us to use these gifts to further your kingdom. For we ask it in Jesus' name, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. The New Testament lesson is taken from Paul's second letter to Th Timothy. As for me, I am already being poured out as a libation, and the time of my departure has come. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. From now on, there is reserved for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day and not only to me, but also to all who have longed for his appearing. Do your best to come to me soon, for Demas, in love with this present world, has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. Crescens has gone to Galatia, <coughs> Titus to Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful in my ministry. I have sent Tychicus to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will pay him back for his deeds. You also must be aware of him, for he strongly opposed our message. At my first defense, no one came to my support, but all deserted me. May it not be counted against them. But the Lord stood by me and gave me strength, so that through me the message might be fully proclaimed and all the Gentiles might hear it. So I was rescued from the lion's mouth. The Lord will rescue me from every evil attack and save me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Amen. Our gospel lesson is taken from the book of Luke. Jesus told this parable to some who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and regarded others with contempt. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee, standing by himself, was praying thus, God, I thank you that I am not like other people, thieves, rogues, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week. I give a tenth of all my income. But the tax collector, standing far off, would not even look up to heaven, but was beating his breast and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his home justified rather than the other. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled, but all who humble themselves will be exalted. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
Yemen friend, so they sailed a mile from land. Peter, Peter, this catch is great, our nets are breaking. Peter answered, just believe, friends, we are in God's mighty hand. Let us pray. Lord, I ask that all my words and the meditations of each of our hearts might be acceptable in your sight, O Christ our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. If you live long enough, somebody's going to disappoint you. If you live long enough, somebody's going to abandon you. It's a fact of life. People disappoint us. And I'd like to tell you about two people today who really disappointed the man named Paul. Paul was a great evangelist. And there was one guy who really disappointed him, abandoned him when he needed him. His name was Mark. Mark was a young kid. And he grew up hearing all the great stories of the evangelist, the great stories of Jesus. And like many young people, he went on a mission trip. Now, I don't know if any of you were on mission trips when you were younger, but they were quite exciting. Adults would take you someplace where you'd learn a trade and help people. And usually the people you helped were grateful. And it was kind of fun. Well, the mission trip that Mark went on was not fun. Mark went on a trip with his uh, cousin Barnabas and his great mentor Paul, and when they went on mission trips, they went to hostile places. People really were not ready to hear about the gospel. Not only that, but the travel itself was treacherous. And so excitement probably turned into terror for this poor young kid, and he decided one day he had had just about enough of that mission trip, and he took the next sailboat home. So he went home. 
Well, then there was another mission trip. And I guess Mark thought long and hard about what he had done. And he must have approached his cousin Barnabas and said, I'd really like another chance. That took a lot of courage. And Barnabas, his cousin, said, sure, I'll take you. And Paul said, nothing doing. This kid abandoned us. He's not faithful. I'm not taking another chance on him. And so Barnabas and Paul got into an argument. Even great people of God get into arguments. And I'm sure Paul said to him, the only reason you're giving this kid a chance is because he's a relative. It says in Acts that they had a really big falling out. And Barnabas, not to be deterred, took Mark with him, gave him that second chance. Now, it was very important that he did that. Because years later, when Paul was in prison, when Paul was having a tough time, who did he ask to bring to his side? But that same young man, Mark, he said, he's really useful to me and to the gospel. It gives us an important lesson when somebody disappoints us. Sometimes we have a scorched earth mentality. You cross me once, you're done. Maybe we ought to have a little more grace because there are people who disappoint, there are people who let us down, but when they come back asking for another chance, might we give them that second chance. If Barnabas had not had faith in that young man, Paul wouldn't have had a wonderful helper when he needed him most. Then there's the second man who disappointed Paul, but this guy did not care to come back and apologize. This guy did not ask forgiveness. His name was Demos, and he had been a co-worker with Paul. He had been on Paul's journeys. He had taken uh, work with Paul. He was very close to Paul. He was in his inner circle. And Paul said, Demas, in love with this world, left me. <coughs> Can you understand why Demas might have left him? Paul was in prison by this time. And maybe Demas had sacrificed many times and he had just come to the end. He couldn't handle it anymore. He couldn't handle the sacrifice. He couldn't handle the thought that perhaps he was next and he might be put in prison and killed. And so he gave it all up at Paul's most vulnerable. When Paul needed him most and he left and didn't come back. What do you do when people abandon and disappoint you and they don't ask forgiveness. They don't say, I'm sorry. They just leave you flat and they're gone. What do you do then? Well, Paul did two things, and they're important lessons for us. The first thing he did was to realize who was still there. So he talked to Timothy and asked Timothy to come and bring him things. He asked Mark to come. He, he talked about the beloved physician Luke who had been with him. So often when people abandon us, we forget that there's a cadre of people around us who still love us because the human mind loves to latch on to the negative, don't we? And we, we kind of grind on the person who really did us wrong. And we forget that God has given us a circle of people who love us and that we can rely on. And so Paul calls in all his favors and all the people that still love him and who will take care of him, even those who didn't stand with him at his trial, because he understood why they didn't. In modern day trials, when a defendant comes before a judge, the family comes and surrounds that defendant. Even if they can't say a word, they want to show that defendant some love and some concern and that they're supportive. Well, in those days, if family or friends came to the defense of a person on trial, they could be arrested too. 
So of course they abandoned Paul there. They didn't want anything to do with that. It wasn't that they didn't love him, but it was self-preservation. But Paul, rather than getting angry with that, took an opportunity. And he said, God was with me. And so he turned the courtroom into a pulpit. And he began to preach to anybody who would listen. So Paul, instead of grinding on the people who left, pulled people around him and said one important thing. He said, I'm, I'm going to look someplace else for help, and that's with God Almighty. He said, God never abandoned him. And isn't that a wonderful thought? Because even if we have a circle of friends, there are times in the watches of the night when our loved one might be asleep or we are alone in the house and we're alone with our thoughts and our losses, but we know that God is with us. God never abandons us in the middle of the night. He gives us grace. He gives us peace. He gives us strength to go on. So when somebody you love has abandoned you, sometimes they can't help it, they die. Know that Jesus promised that he will never leave us or forsake us to the very end of our lives and beyond. Has somebody disappointed you? If they come back, give them grace. If you've disappointed someone, have the courage to ask for another chance. If someone hasn't come back, look at the people who are still around and give thanks. And always remember, God will never disappoint. God is with us always. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you that your presence is always with us. We thank you that you are the God of a second chance. And if we have disappointed anyone or you, that you will bring us back to yourself. And we ask, O oh Lord, that you would give us the grace to live each and every day in your light, in your love, surrounded by the people of God. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me as we sing our closing hymn number 735, O oh, Master, Let Me Walk With Thee.
Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Mm -hmm.